ship, Chad. <laughs> we got a rate predictor in Sonar 5.0. It's what the people have been asking for. Oh. We have listened. Of course we have. And who else we listen to? Truckstop.com at truckstop.com. At truckstop.com, we're in it for the long haul. Our marketplace helps drive the success of the entire freight industry by giving carriers and brokers an efficient way to collaborate with access to trusted partners and the right tools. The road to success is wide open. Truckstop.com, let's move, Chad. Wide open like we are wide open and live right now. All right, recap yeah. Sonar 5.0 for me. What did you say? <laughs> well, I see uh, it's, it's like getting a whole new video game and you've leveled up. Uh, one of the things, yes, rate predictor is uh, it's um, the, it doesn't just do today's price. It's like the data science team got together and created with a little machine learning using a lot of our data sets. Well, they, most load boards, right? Like, it, who cares that it was a dollar eighty-two, right, to, right, for a mile last month? So what what's it, it going to be in three months? It can predict tomorrow. It can predict next week it can predict maybe even up to next year so it's a really really cool new feature i think that that's probably the deep awesome amazing one that we have coming up but i think the you big, know what's even more amazing a big sexy one is who we have on deck it's shelly simpson from jb hunt they're not here to just talk about jb hunt they're here to talk about jb hunt 360 as well an amazing platform and the sponsor of the after party tonight where we're gonna get lit brother <laughs> it, it is, but I, I also I want we can't wait, and Shelly will be on momentarily. But the the big sexy thing about Sonar was the three D. Yeah, yeah, three D. Do you That's ever say? Do you ever say hi, Shelly, when when and your wife gets confused? Because Shelly Simpson may not know this, but your wife's name is Shelly as well. Well, that's right. Um, it's Shelly with an E, E Y. So it's a slight difference, but well, yes. So, um, thanks 3D for, thanks, maps, right? Thanks for making those connections, buddy. Yes. Well, that's um, that's where the mind comes from. 3D <laughs> maps. Tell me a little bit about that, real quick. Well, it's like when you look at it, it's all in 3D now and not 2D. It's Why? amazing, and I feel like this is like 4D, man. It is. It's a little wild. Right. It's a little surreal looking out at everyone up here, and I imagine when the guests come up here today, they're gonna be like, "This is quite a bit, bit different than the booth." Before, but you know what? There's a guest right there. Let's bring Shelly Simpson. Come on up, oh. Shelly Simpson, ladies and gentlemen. Come on up. Great yeah, to have yeah. you. Hi, Shelly. Okay. We have a shirt for you ah, as well. I love it. We'll give you a couple extras for your tape too. Okay, awesome. Hi, guys. Shelly, did you have any trouble getting in to Chicago? I did not. You, you're one of the lucky ones. I came in this morning. Oh, that's well. You guys are also masters <laughs> of logistics over and moving people and moving products over at JB Hunt. That's what we do. Well, you know, you have been at JB Hunt for, well, quite a while. And you've seen some big changes, Shelly. I'm wondering, like, the one of the things, like, when, speaking of technology in, in the industry, when did you begin to say, I think we've hit a tipping point? Like, I think that big changes are coming. Is there a, is there a time or a moment where you was, saw that? Today, when she saw Sonar 5.0, did you? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a really great question because, you know, we're a legacy organization built and founded by a driver that has been raised in an asset-based organization that about 12 years ago then ventured into the non-asset space. And it really wasn't, um, I would love to say that we were highly strategic and really thought of some really great ideas, but what happened is we were sitting in a, a marketing meeting reviewing some of the work we'd done with our shippers online and uh, it, was, it was kind of a platform we had rolled out. We hadn't done a ton of marketing to it. And somebody said, our head of marketing said, did you know that we had 800,000 visits to our dot-com site based on that? And that kind of wowed me. But what wowed me more, he said, well, I think you'll be more shocked that actually the fourth most trafficked reason people come to jbhunt.com is if you are a carrier trying to do business with JB Hunt. And that was a 10-year-old one page dot com page that took you several clicks in and they had done that one million times it was at that very moment that we said you know what wait a minute we have the making of what a marketplace is we actually have shippers we have capacity and both are trying to connect to each other that was back in 2013 took us a couple of years really from a leadership team and then by 15 we really started to think it all happened in a marketing meeting you heard it right here. No, but 2013, that seems, that seems like a good bit ahead of where a lot, of, a lot of changes were happening. 
You know, I, I think we have an advantage um, that in our past, we've actually transformed the organization several different times. And so we were the first, you know, leader in the space inside Intermodal, which was very transformational inside our industry. When most people were saying, well, truckers are going to haul long haul freight, we really knew there was a more efficient way to do that. So we'd already taken the organization through a major transformation before this just was our next step. I'm glad that you guys have stepped up as leaders because this is a business that a lot of times is follow the leader. And if companies like yours don't take the initiative to start bringing in technology and transforming customers' expectations, because that's what you do. You know, the survival of our business isn't just based on the huge carriers or the small carriers. We're talking about a field where there's, what, 3,000, 4,000, 100,000 different guys moving boxes. So the, re the way technology gets in is when platforms like yours help develop it and bring it to marketplace and raise those expectations and raise the bar and you make a better ecosystem for all of us. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. It isn't just about one of us. It really is a, about revolutionizing the entire industry. There is so much waste in the industry today that that need is created uh, overall. And I don't know if it's that we're talking to customers, they're talking to us, or we're all doing that together. We all know there's a more efficient way to move goods. We just have to do that collaboratively versus saying I can individually do that on my own. Yeah, it's all about relationships, all about seeing things in the full circle. JB Hunt 360 is a part of the, the, the tech emphasis. Well, I mean, let's, let's think about it from the, the, the consumer point of view, your customers. What, what's the feedback they're giving you on, on your changes and your adaptions? Yeah, I think for us, our customers are wanting to do more business with people that they know and they trust. They want to do more, they want us to do more, and, and also other providers that do a good job, but they're looking for new, innovative ways. You know, the way to do bids has not changed in the last 25 years since I've been with the company. Wow. So we've been doing customer bids the exact same way, and here we have technology and data and sonar, right? Sonar 5.0, which is something we're really excited about because it changes the way we can think about how customers do bids, how we do bids, and really how do we solve for that in a better way. They know how to stand out. I was at Gats in Dallas, and you guys had, your booth was attracting everyone like a moth to a flame. You had that virtual truck driving simulator, which I was awful at. I would never get my CDL <laughs> if it was based on that game. Not that I have one now, but it was, it was tough. And if you notice here, we're obviously a company that likes to stand out. We bring the LED. How has the space changed, though, through the years? You've, you've been doing this for quite some time now. Do you like the direction that everything's going? Well, I do love the major disruptors in the industry, and we consider ourselves one of those, but we also know we're being disrupted. It's really on both sides. I don't think you're a disruptor or being disrupted. I think it's both. It's what you choose to do. So we actually welcome the new entrants into the market, people that have never been inside transportation. We think they are gaining the right level of attraction at a customer base. So customers are starting to think differently from some of those conversations. Now, people that have those relationships can really think through and how to talk customers through. Now, how do we take those ideas and really put those into motion? We actually welcome new entrants into our market. Interesting. Like you think of yourselves, I mean, you're incumbents and thinking of yourselves as disruptors. Almost, I, that, I think that's kind of an interesting thought. I hadn't hadn't thought of it that way. Um, what's, we, yeah. I was going to say, we have an award show tomorrow, right? We have right. the Freight Tech. We're, we're announcing the Freight Tech 25 and the Freight Tech number one. You guys have been finalists in the past. Where do you think it falls this year? Are you going to be number one? You're taking home the, uh, the, the trophy? Uh, you know, I don't know that it's about being number one for yeah. us. It's really about solving for the entire industry for us, for, for everyone that's involved. So we do want to create the most efficient transportation network, and we want to be a part of that ecosystem. Uh, for us, if we can do that, we do think we're one of the top providers inside this space and the, the top thought leader inside this space. Obviously, we'd love to be number one. It's not the yeah. most important thing to us. Yeah, so when well, you walk through here, do you you don't see competitors, you see partners. Absolutely. Potential partners. Yeah, if you watch, uh, I tend to want to know the names of, of every single person that's a competitor because we can really share great ideas together. Certainly, we're competitors, but if we're trying to solve the bigger issue, which is creating more efficient, uh, a more efficient supply chain, I think 
that we can really all win. There is more than one person that can do this. Do, do you uh, hit some of the demos? for? Uh, do, do, do you I see did. any exciting new things? Uh, well, sonar was the most exciting thing that I saw. I did get a sneak peek of that oh, last week. Yeah, yeah. um, and that's because we believe fully in transparency. I am huge on making sure that we create a transparent market, including pricing. So for us, getting to real time is really important, and that's something we plan to leverage in our data. But I also loved uh, where every company that I just watched all the demos, every company was in a different place individually of where they're at in their transformation. Wow, that, that's fascinating. So um, so you love Sonar, you're speaking the language to, to us. Um, so I mean, like, do, do you like, what's one of the favorite things you like to do here uh, at, at um, FreightWaves Live? Well, I think it's just connectivity. Yeah. For us to really understand what's happening in the market, for us to see who else is in the market and who we can really partner with as an organization. And we have brought several shippers here to be and help them get educated as to what we're doing inside this space. You know, I was talking to Craig over the weekend on our Sirius XM show, and I said, you know, why are you live streaming all of this? This is a, you know, a marquee event, people want to go to it, and he goes, because a big part of going to conferences is networking, and if you're not here, you can't shake those hands, you can't see those relationships, you can't really see those live demos in action and make these connections. So come to Freight Waves Live in Atlanta in May. Where do you guys think you'll be by then? Uh, you know, our, our organization is continuing to move faster and faster, and our, our real theme for us is Accelerate. Um, that's where we're at in our innovation cycle, and so we've really moved past disrupting and adapting. We're in an innovation of uh, acceleration overall. We actually are up on demo at 107 uh, to show you what our new features are inside the platform that we're really excited from a shipping perspective. Okay, 107. And Shelly, before you go, for the people who aren't here, those ones at home or are watching us on this great live stream, you mentioned your website. Give it a plug. Yeah. So. It's real simple for us, jbhunt.com, and you can learn anything about what we're doing uh, in our digital transformation. And for those JB Hunt employees that are watching online now, there are about 1,500 people that are on from JB Hunt as well. Oh, wonderful. That helps educate our people nice. as to what we're doing as well. We'd love to hear from you, both carriers, employees, and customers. Nice. Thank Fantastic. you so much. Fantastic. Thanks yeah. so much for being here, Shelly. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. I'll make sure Emily gets you Thanks some for shirts for your team. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, yeah, shirts, shirts all around. 1,500 shirts for, for Shelly, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Who's up next? Is, it, is Jet up next? Oh, Jet, you're right over Jet there. Project P44 making, making an appearance. The superstars are afraid, one after the other. What the hits keep, just keep on coming. Hey, Jet. Thanks for the Jet. opportunity. It's good to see you. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, well, so it's good to see our Chicago, uh, more Chicago yeah. buddies here in Chicago. So it wasn't too hard for you getting over here? It's pretty reasonable. <laughs> it's, all, it's all compared. Man, you guys are doing a, a lot of cool things uh, with Project 44. Uh, you know, like, of course, you too were in, like, one of the finalists in the Freight Tech uh, Award. Are you, like, what, what are you vying to, like... Are, yeah. you, are you are you disru di disrupting? Are you going for the, the it, top? Is Shelly out of earshot? <laughs> <laughs> he, he predicted. He predicted you guys were going to win. Oh wow! I did, well, that, I did uh, not. Uh, thank you. We, that, we that, were really really fortunate last year. Uh, I think we were like number oh, three. Oh, very modest. So very really fortunate. So thank you. What has changed since then? So that was a year ago. You guys yeah. were at number three. Some people are predicting number you, you could number two. Number two. Right, number wow. two. Wow, even better, right? <laughs> even better. Thank you. Uh, so, but now you've only got one place to go, either up or down. So, uh, uh, yeah. one's a shorter climb. That's so, right. let's hope you get there. So, how much has visibility changed, though, and how has the the market dynamics changed? Yeah. How have your conversations changed in the past year? Well, I think I think Freightways does a great job, right? I think actually that that prediction that we were number two in the top twenty five was was just an early indicator. Um, candidly, about a year ago, most companies still weren't that interested in what it was that we, we were talking about. And so you have this, this massive explosion uh, of interest and visibility over the last, last 12 months. So that was an early indicator. Yeah. Um, now what we see happening is, is that the conversation has quickly evolved from where is my truck? Uh, it's, in the last year, it's evolved to what's the ETA of that truck going to be? And now folks are asking the right question, which is where is that PO? Or where is that? Uh, where's, where's that item? Or where's that skewed? Oh man, Je I was gonna say, I, a lot of it's weird how many companies and how many shippers don't consider their inventory part of their supply chain. You know, like sure. transportation and and the whole thing is sort of segmented in their minds, where it's like that's the whole lifeblood of your organization. 
That's the right. movement of it. That's right. Yeah, we tend to think of it as you have inventory at rest and you have inventory in motion. And all a truck, train, plane, boat is is, is a warehouse with wheels or wings uh, or something that floats. And so um, if you can really understand where that part of the inventory is at, it changes everything in your supply chain. Yeah, well, I mean, if you don't know yeah. where your inventory is, you don't know where your revenue is because that's, that's what right. your money is tied up in. You're exactly right. And you provide solutions for shippers, logistic service providers, and carriers. That's I'm wondering, right. like, when you when you are like providing solutions for them, who are the most who see the value the easiest, and who are the most challenging to try to bring into the fold? Yes. So, yeah, the ecosystem is complex. There's 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 no doubt. And we talk about the shippers. That in itself, you have the inbound and you have the outbound. You have the the carriers, the the LSPs, the 3PL subcontracts. Very very complex ecosystem. To your point. Yeah. We tend to think of ourselves as, as an enabler of that. We don't think of ourselves as a disruptor. Um, and so all those different parties, they're all in the digitalization journey. They're at different places. And so we always think, how can we meet the market where it is? How can we understand what uh, the headwinds are that they have? How can we help them be their, their, their best selves? So I would say there are some carriers out there that are extremely advanced that really um, are, are, have a great digital strategy. And then there are some that are a little bit uh, far, far, farther, farther behind. Chicago has some of the oldest logistics companies in the That's nation. Right. It is a great barometer of, of acceptance of things. I mean, That's if right. you are in San Francisco, if you're in Silicon Valley, you're probably going to hear a lot of VCs, you know, blowing smoke at you and a lot of people really excited about tech and technology and Bitcoin and all of these different things. You go into Chicago, you're probably going to see a lot more skepticism. That's right. How are you breaking through it? Because you said that conversation has started to change. Yes, I think now what, what's so clear is that the network like that a Project 44 has now, it, it's the, so large, there's so many carriers that are participating, it's very, very clear ROI now. So there's above the line ROI, hard, and then you have below the line the soft ROI. And so I think you see um, just, just incredible um, ROI that really justifies it. Most folks, whether in Chicago or they're in Seattle or wherever they're at, they realize that to your point, inventory, they need to understand where their revenue is at and where it's coming from. Um, and need some type of access to it. But now you're able to actually um, to, to quantify it. Well, one of the things that we're about to talk to uh, a couple of partners of you, yours, yes. uh, SAP, like you want to give us a little a little tease before they, we bring them yeah. on? What, what's the partnership with P44 and SAP? Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Really, really excited. Uh, it's a deal that took a long time to put together. Um, it's probably one of the most proud moments of my life, which is uh, for Project 44 to partner with, with SAP. They have, a, they have a great um, team over there. They have something called the Logistics Business Network. I don't wow. want to steal their thunder, let them talk about it. <laughs> sure. It's really okay. bold, it's very ambitious. I'm really excited that we're going to be able to help uh, help power that globally. Um, so I'll leave, it, I'll leave it there. All right, man. Jed, always a pleasure Appreciate to have it. you on the show. Thanks, Thank guys. you so much. Doing yeah, great thank stuff. Thanks. Thank you, Jed. Appreciate it. There you go. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, love it. All right, well, come on Yes, up. we have Friends Hero and Paige Cox from SAP. Come we've, on down. We've only got one microphone, but we can share. We need to share. Do we have another chair? Yeah, it's, it's coming. It, it's it, coming, it, It's Paige. coming. Oh, here it is. Here, here it is. is, Paige. Ask and you shall receive. Well, why so, don't folks, we are just... Are you in here? Are you guys in from Germany, Paige? I was looking you up on LinkedIn, and you're, like, here... Atlanta via Germany. I'm trying to figure out the whole background. I know I'm a glo I'm a globetrotter, I would <laughs> say. Um, yeah, so I, I started in the SAP US, so I was working out of Atlanta. I actually grew up in New York, uh, and I went to school at Purdue, so Chicago was quite a sweet home. Okay. And um, then last five years, I'm in the headquarter in Germany. Wow. I worked everywhere. So SMP, SAP and Project 44, some people may say when he didn't want to steal your thunder, so take the thunder now, take the reins and, and shoot down the lightning from the clouds. What, what is this partnership all about? Yeah. So perhaps I'll start with SAP, what we are doing. So we are the, the biggest software vendor in the su supply chain space. So our portfolio spans from design to operate, designing new products, uh, new machines, and producing it. Um, then make sure that the logistic uh, is right to bring the materials to the production line, having the warehousing, and then from a production line to the customers, and at the end also operate the machines and taking the service uh, for the products. So, but no company is uh, working for itself. So 
they are all collaborating. It starts with a design collaboration, manufacturing collaboration with subcontractors, and of course, big time in logistics. And that's the reason also why we founded a complete new business unit, and Page is running this business unit around uh, uh, networks, for asset intelligent networks, for manufacturing networks, design networks, and for logistic business networks. And logistic business networks is our most important network we have. So yeah, so as the largest software provider in the logistics space, you guys see the need for collaboration, connection. How is the connection working? How, what are you guys gonna do with Project 44? Right, so um, maybe we'll take a step back where how the industry is evolving, right? So when, sure. when the logistic uh, needs of a company, they oftentimes start with how to optimize in their own enterprise. And there, there's a lot of this intra-company needs that need to collaborate. But as the industry evolves, the many people need to really reach out to, to be much more connected to their logistic providers, to their freight forwarders, to the carriers. So shippers need this connectivity. And it's very costly and it's very cumbersome to maintain one-to-one -one relationship. So we envision is to provide one open and secure network that's multi-capable and multi-mode around the globe where everybody can be on board once but be con connected to many. And here we work with various partners to help us achieve that, uh, to, to get whether it's uh, connecting to the digital freight forwarders or to connecting to a visibility platform like Project 44. So P44 is a part of the larger strategy. Yeah. Okay. What, what does that mean? So no business relationship matters if there isn't a return on investment. So what does this mean to your customers? What does a partnership like this do for you guys? We've talked about the benefits to P44. What about you? Yeah. So every network lives from scale. So how many uh, members do you have on the network? And there's no company in the world so who can onboard all the carriers, all the trucks, the containers, and so forth. And our strategy is to build the, the networks of networks with strategic partners. And we have, we just uh, earlier in the year, we uh, announced a partnership with Uber Freight to connect to the freight forwarding industry. Um, and the P44 is our strategic partner for visibility networks. So we in SAP, we, we have the digital twin of the network from starting from the customers through the production lines to the suppliers. And what P44 is bringing into, into the space is they know where the trucks are, where the transportation resources are. And now we can combine, let's say for example, a sales order or purchase order um, and all the material flow we have with the information, where's the truck, with the dynamic ETA calculation and feed that real time into our, into, to our supply chain. So this is really a perfect symbiosis uh, between an ERP vendor like SAP and a uh, visibility provider like P44. You, you know, we uh, we talk a lot about uh, transparency and visibility. Well, actually, um, it does sound like, I mean, with visibility and transparency, we are making it happen. And you guys are playing a part in the, uh, the larger framework of things. So thank you so much for being on. Uh, yeah. How do people learn more? How do people reach out and learn more about what you guys are doing, this partnership? Where do they go to after this stream? Yeah, of course, uh, you can visit uh, sap.com and find our landing page, SAP Logistic Business Networks. You can learn about our network of network strategy if you would like to become our partner and also together jointly make um, the new waves of innovation. So, uh, yeah, we're very excited. Fantastic. Paige yeah, Cox, Franz, Here's Hero. Some t -shirts, folks. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. joining us. Franz, are you a large or an extra large? Uh, he, he's going a large. He's an athletic yeah, man. He's going to show off his yeah. muscles. All right, hold on okay. a second. Redwood is going to come on, and they have some breaking news from Redwood Logistics. A big leadership announcement right here come at on. Freightwaves Live Chicago. Come on up, Mark Yeager. Come on, Mark. Don't be shy. How's it going? Hey, guys, good. How hey, you doing? Hey, good to see you. Hey, go take a shot Good to see you. I'm a big fan of the show. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Great to have great to have you on here. You are here in Chicago already. We are headquartered here so in Chicago. So it wasn't hard for you to make the trip here. Thanks for being a part. Hey, it's our, my pleasure. 
Yeah. Um, well, so let's... Yeah, what's the let, announcement? Yeah, let's start with the breaking news. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, a couple of big things for us. We're bringing on two uh, key executives. Uh, we're bringing David Rowe on as our chief operating officer, and we're bringing Nicole White on as our chief information officer. Okay. Our current CIO, Scott Cousins, is moving over to spearhead uh, Redwood Platform Services, which includes a really exciting integration platform we call Redwood Connect 2.0. And we're going to be rolling that out at the show tomorrow. So we're really excited. Very wow. excited. So what do these moves mean to, to the outside world? What, do, what does this mean to the customer of Redwood, the potential customer of Redwood? What kind of changes are we going to see and what's exciting? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really exciting. What this really is on our part is a significant investment in our people. Right? You look these pumped, are, by the way. You look, I am you really look excited. No, I'm really excited about this. I mean, these are two incredibly talented executives. Redwood has a terrific management team, and this makes us that much stronger. It's a huge investment in people. It's a huge commitment to technology. And what it really does is enables us to double down on innovation. So for a company of our size to be making these kind of investments, it is really exciting. Well, there's a lot of disparate points, not only, of course, in the supply chain, but also just with all the different kinds of technology and apps and people getting app fatigue are you guys trying to do some integration is that a part of the strategy that's what this is all about right you know we identified this as a pain point several years ago and started uh -huh. down this path we realized that there was a lot of great technology out there but without integration you can't really maximize the utility of it so we believe integration is the key we also think it's a major pain point for our customers and it took us a long time it was a long journey way before i ever joined the organization but we're right now at a point where we're really ready to launch a product that right now is already moving about three billion dollars in freight you know, utilizing this tool, but this gives us a whole new uh, open architecture that we can now take to our customers and let them take advantage of the integration capabilities of Redwood Connect. Well, congratulations on th this exciting news. Yep. And also, uh, congratulations on breaking into the Freight Tech uh, 25. You know, uh, you're, you're yeah. way up in the rankings. Are you uh, excited for the rewards? Yeah, really excited. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. It's great to see that kind of recognition. You know, um, that, that has become a major, that was a major milestone for us, something we set our sights on a couple of years ago. And it's, it's exciting to be in, you know, that kind of company, right? There's a lot of great companies doing great things in tech. It's great to get recognition for it. You know, I asked Shelly this question and I said, when you look around, do you see competitors or potential partners? Do you see idea channels, things you're ideating on, things that you're like, wow, I'm really blown away by some of these demos. What is your takeaway so far from this event? I mean, we see both, right? We see competitors, but we see a lot of potential partners. We're a very collaborative organization. And, you know, just being in the position we are as a 3PL, you have to be cooperative and work with a lot of different parties. You know, our whole strategy is to bring the best technology to our customers, whether we build it, whether it's proprietary for us, or whether somebody else is bringing it to the marketplace. So it's, it's key, and fostering those relationships like we're able to do is, is critical to that strategy right because as as craig fuller points out like we can we don't have to live stream this but we know that this content is out there we yep. like to share it we like to you know help the audience who can't be here but yes there is something about the relationship building of actually being here uh what when you look around and you're establishing something like the demo days do you, do you, do you see some interesting ideas uh, out there when you're uh, li listening to some of these disruptors. Absolutely. I mean, we love the demo days because it gives us a chance to see a number of different companies with very progressive ideas, you know, put their game face on and really show us what they're about. So, and we like the fact that you guys have, um, you know, sort of uh, created an environment in which it has to be a real existing technology, it's not a theory, right? And so what we're seeing what we is really the leading edge ideas in the marketplace that are you know, likely to impact the market in the fairly near term. There's the word, leading edge. Because if you're not leading, if you're not predicting where to be, you're just chasing the market. 
You're just coming up with prescriptions for ailments that you may already have. How do you guys stay ahead of the, your customers' needs? Because that's really what we're talking about here. It really is. It's a, it's a, it's a tough challenge, you know, but we can't be in a position where we're reacting, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the life cycle on Redwood Connect, we had to identify this as a pain point early on, honestly, before our customers realized that it was a pain point. I think it helps us, though, because we're not just a tech company. We're actually practitioners. So we are seeing the dynamics, we're seeing the pain points, and we're able to apply our innovation resources to those pain points and develop what I think are really an effective set of solutions that's constantly evolving. Have you guys checked out Sonar? We have checked out Sonar. Are you I, excited about the 5.0? I am super excited. <laughs> I, I, I think that there is so much future upside and the data that's being generated by Sonar is, is incredibly insightful for us. And we think it really is accurately capturing the dynamics that are in the marketplace right now. Yeah, that's where that's where I'd like to see transparency in the supply chain, what, sharing those data sets. What are yeah. some of those dynamics that you're seeing? Because this has been a we talk about it all the time, and it, it, it's almost been beaten to death. But 2018, amazing year. You yeah. know, not really one we can look on as as the standard. It's it's a bar that people really aren't jumping over in terms of freight movement. How does a company like yours help people navigate a year like 2019? Yeah, so I mean, 2019's been a fundamentally different than you know. Uh, environment than 2018 was, and 2018 was undoubtedly an aberration, right? But right now, what we're seeing is that um, those dynamics have shifted fundamentally. You know, the spot market is pretty much dead, but it's actually an opportunity for our customers to realize some cost savings because of that dynamic. Spot rates are well below contract rates right now. Um, we're, we think that that's likely to persist for the foreseeable future. That could shift in 2020 as you look at, you know, AB5 and the hair follicle testing and things like that. Ooh, yeah. But it's unlikely we're going to see a fundamental shift. But what we want to be able to do is help our customers make the best choices in terms of their supply chain. And having more and better and more timely information is critical to that. So well, Sonar helps us there. Well, fantastic. Congratulations on the big announcements and the new moves. How, how do they get in touch with you, yeah. Mark? So uh, redwoodlogistics.com is our website. And we'll also be walking the floor. And we have a, we have a booth at the show. All right. Well, you know right, where to yep. find them. They are here making relationships and collaborating, ready to talk to you. Great. There's an Thank extra so large for, for you. Thanks, Thanks, Mark. Thanks, guys. Okay. And now joining us, we have the man, the myth, the legend is Craig, Craig Fuller. Fuller. Come on up. How you doing? Good you. I'm a little too <laughs> shit. Good to Junior, see you. you doing, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So how do the, how did, how did the big, I gotta, no, I gotta say, I got to ask a question. Yeah. Why are you in a tie? Um, oh, I know from, why you're in a tie. Off supply the supply chain, chain. Yeah. you you, you got to put a tie on. He's trying to impress you. <laughs> <laughs> That's I not mean, working. that <laughs> ship has <laughs> sailed. Um, but that is a beautiful. Uh, like this, my wife did, was not. So I bought it. My wife was totally against me embroidering it. She thought it was a bad idea. I personally have gotten a lot of compliments. It on, looks on that very shirt, nice. yeah. yeah, it's yeah. The, it's a I like sweater. the brown touch too. Or is you that do? underneath that? I, 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 no, it's like a white shirt. My wife picked it out. Ah. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, Craig, one of the things we've talked, uh, you know, a good bit about what we're trying to do here, and one of the things that I find intriguing, and we just we just saw Ben Mesrich, uh, is that you want to uh, provide story, a lot, of, some of some of the context to what we're doing. You want to bring in people that tell story. You know, we like, but what about that? Like, how, how does that bring people in, and what attracted to you to that idea in the first place? Well, I, I hate sitting through boring lectures. Yeah. I was a horrible student. I made C's. I barely got through college. And so a lot of it is just because I was bored listening to these long diatribes. And so I think people that tell stories keep it interesting. I thought Ben's stories today was really compelling. I thought he, you know, it was a really interesting guy to talk to. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cut it short, but I wanted to keep going another 15, 20 minutes. And I think that's what sort of makes that one-on-one -on -one interaction pretty magical is because you like get into the story and it starts to build and it was, he had so much to offer. Words tell a story, but so does data. And the best data storyteller is Sonar 5.0. I you, like that plug there, Dooner. <laughs> you debuted it just a little <laughs> bit ago up there. Yeah. You get, do, does people know you get paid every time we? You every say time that? I say it, yeah, I get $100 <laughs> in uh, Amazon gift cards and Chili's coupons. Yeah, <laughs> well, of course we're joking, but you are a big fan. No, I am. I, you know, I love the 3D maps. I saw all the rehearsals, and I'm glad I did because doing this, we're kind of up here when some of the stage stuff's going on. And that's what's also great about these live streams because then we can go back and, and catch 
all this stuff. And I think you mentioned that on radio. You're like, man, so much. There's so much content going on. You can't take it all in. I, 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 I honestly can't sit in the the post like conversations I'm not in because I'm, you know, I'm I'm making sure things are being produced uh, properly and everybody's having a good time and I'm networking with people on the floor and just trying to stay tuned with what's going on. So it is it is a lot of work. But I, I, I'm physically exhaust, like it's physically exhausting because you're, you know, there's a lot of conversations. What's exciting about Sonar 5.0? I mean, look, it's uh, a lot of maps. 3D it, really maps, right? 3D <laughs> maps, yeah. I'm physically tired. Yeah. So, like, it's, I am exhausted. Yeah. Well, I, did, just... I did my big plug earlier. So, yeah. I'm more excited about the rest of the show, and most of my heavy parts are done, I think. I don't think I have a ton. I have some. Yeah, interviews. tell tell us about what what you're excited about. What what should they be looking forward to next? Tonight the party. So yeah. JB Hunt is throwing a badass party here at Freightways Live. Yeah, Freightways Live Chicago, the freight tech event of the decade, and this is like game day up here. This remember- is game day. We need signs next time. <laughs> can we have signs? Yeah. We- of course we can have we signs. Should have- no, I mean like like people holding up signs like game yes. day. Like, like, go Dooner and go Craig and yeah, stuff like and that. Yeah, and there are people trolling behind you. Us. Uh, that would be interesting. One of the reasons that you're tired is because there is a story before the story that a lot of people here experience, and that was just getting to Freightways Live Chicago to begin with after all the cancellations out this way. Our own journey, we had people taking vans. Some didn't arrive until 2 in the morning. No, and I don't know why that is. <laughs> I think it's because they, they took a left honestly, turn at Albuquerque. They all left at the same time. Most of them got around into town about yeah. 11 o'clock, and then one van mysteriously shows up at 2. Yeah. I don't know why that van. Now, let's keep in mind who was in the van. Yeah. They're not, We're not data scientists names. or people that deal in logistics. They're journalists. Yeah. Uh, so, so they were following the story through St. Louis. I, I apparently guess. so. I don't I don't think they're really good at navigating the uh, the highways. The actually the data science team did have an interesting story. They took a long time getting here. Have you heard they, about they that? They actually helped somebody out yeah. along the way. Yeah. Like, first, they were stopped for an hour with an overturned semi right in front of them. They patiently waited that out. Then they saw someone slip off the highway and up a, a, an embankment and hit some trees. They pulled over and hel- and went up there and helped an older woman out of the car because it was freezing. Yeah. And she was uh, she disoriented. Okay? She was okay. They took her into um, their van, which must have been kind of creepy for her, which a bunch of big data scientists did <laughs> bring well, into I mean, the van. How did that but, van smell? They, they don't look like <laughs> they're not that intimidating. Yeah. They're, they're on the nerdier side of our staff. Drove her up an exit and got her a cup of coffee. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and she was, okay? Did she go to the hospital? She was okay, apparently. Um, they didn't they, take her to the hospital? It delayed her another, them another hour. I don't know okay. all the details about what they got did. Got it. Was but it at a uh, pilot flying J? Very, very altruistic efforts. Oh, you, of know what, our data you know what I think is cool about this? It, it's just it's the growth of these events. I, I think there was maybe 900 or so in Atlanta, 1,500 more plus it's, here. Uh, it's 1,500 registered. I don't know. I think we're at 1,200 have checked in. It's still pretty awesome considering yeah, the storm. I mean, the weather. I mean, we've had probably a dozen uh, plus uh, cancellations due to weather. Yeah. But a lot of people who were originally scheduled yesterday have actually made it today. Great. So, it was interesting because in the first session, Ben Meserix, it was probably, when he opened up, is 25% full. I think by the time of it, it was about 75% full. Uh, but if you go out here and you look inside it during some of these later sessions, it's, it's a pretty full crowd. And right now, look at this. It's very full. What, what demos here are surprising you? You know, I have, again, I haven't had a chance to yeah. see the demos. Uh, and, I, and I won't watch those until after the show. It's because, like, I'm working, so... I don't get to do it. But I, I do want to talk about the donut <laughs> surprise. Okay. So, do you guys, you know the story, right? You yeah, it's not. It's, yeah. at first it just seemed like one of those little stories that kind of went viral randomly. Turns out to be a pretty impressive story, this Jason Donut Guy Gonzalez uh, and his uh, entrepreneurship. Well, he, uh, he was hauling contraband across state lines, <laughs> <laughs> which... In the form of sugar donuts, Krispy Kreme. So he had he had was playing arbitrage between the Iowa market, I believe, and the or Nebraska market and the Minnesota market. Found a pain point in the supply chain. He did, and he was selling donuts. He was arbing the market by selling donuts in a different market and doubling the price, and he made a lot of money. 
And then Crispy, the, the apparently reporter wrote a story, Crispy Kreme found out about it, and they shut him down. And then yeah, the, that seems the story harsh. became viral. And that's where the story ended at first. It did, and the story became viral, and there were a lot of people really upset that Krispy Kreme had been such, you know, had been mean. Big <laughs> yeah. corporate donut conglomerate yeah. that was trying to hoard <laughs> their supply of these wonderful They realized there was things. a hole in their logic. <laughs> <laughs> Turner, yes. Uh, anyways, um, and so he, uh, we, we got into the story, and we made a phone call to Daimler and said, wouldn't it be pretty awesome if we can figure out a way to help this guy and support his uh, entrepreneurship? Whoa. So, so what happened? So he, today on stage, we presented him with a new Freightliner uh, Sprinter van. What? Whoa! Yeah, so now he can, Congratulations! He can, he can All go I got is a t-shirt hauling, to give him. He can go from hauling a hundred donuts in his sedan oh. <laughs> to tens, tens of thousands of donuts in the van. And on top of that, Krispy Kreme came through. They, well, I mean... Right? Didn't they say... I, we were handing out donuts. Bit, I'm a little disappointed. So here's okay. what happened. So oh. they, did get, they did let him go back and create a donut business. But here's what really disappoints me. Oh. Is they only gave him like 600 don- boxes of donuts. <laughs> and all the viral press that they earned off of this, they should have stepped up. So we took it where they should have. I was reading the article. Yeah. And I'm like, why don't they support this kid by buying him a donut delivery van? They didn't do it. So, but Daimler did and Freightways did and we arranged it. So, and you know, that's a little bit disappointing. They should have stepped up more. That, so I'm shading you, Krispy Kreme. How many boxes of donuts can he deliver at one time in this van? I would say tens of thousands. Tens. All right. We'll have to talk to him about the economics, I believe. I mean, how much does a donut weigh? Does I, he weigh out or cube out first? Well, I think we, he cubes out. We had I to stand down the hallway. 16, it's a pound. We had to carry right? like 14 boxes of, I have four boxes each, right? There's 150, right? there's 1,500 donuts this morning. 1,500 Which were donuts. not donated. We bought them because Krispy Kreme. Oh, also was not, they did they, not no, come I, through. I am oh. shaming Krispy Kreme. Daimler <laughs> I see, I have stepped up where they have not. Well, the donut guy is here, but Jason. Think about it. I mean, from their perspective, we're talking about Krispy Kreme all morning long. Yeah. This has no. been totally earned media. And because we have the largest audience in freight, yeah. they're getting a lot of donut exposure. Well, and I'm from the Northeast, so like I can get disowned for talking about Duncan? them instead of Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I think so. But uh, Jason's here. Let's yeah, invite well, him let's out. Let's bring let's him bring, on. Let's bring Jason him on. The donut Gonzalez. king of Minnesota. Woo. Come on up. Come on. The king of the Krispy Kreme. Oh my God. Here you go. There you go, because so, you just couldn't get enough, you, we're sure. Jason, thank you for joining us. You came here from Minnesota, right? Sure did. Did you have any weather along the way? There was quite some snow on the way. We got detoured to the longer route, and uh, definitely some snow. Some people said, is he going, we were worried if people were going to cancel, right? Whenever you're going to have a huge event like this, there's all this anxiety, especially when we ourselves had a lot of trouble getting here. And the one person I was like, there is no way in hell this guy's going to cancel, because he drives like 250 miles back and forth delivering donuts. Like, this is not a problem. No, not a problem (laughs) at all. I'll drive... 20 hours if I have to, but yeah. driving's not too bad. It's not as bad as people think. So now that you have this van, you can because before, your biggest limiting factor in your operation and your supply chain was that you could only carry X amount of donuts. It wasn't the amount of people to sell to. Do you think you can sell an entire van load of donuts to people now? <laughs> or? Yeah, I mean, there's a possibility. I know right at launch I'll have at least two to 300 orders because I've gotten plenty of requests like, hey, you know, can we get in on the order? Can we jump in on the action? But a whole van load, that's going to be quite a bit. I'll have to modify the van, but nonetheless, I should be able to crank out three to 400 <laughs> this, dozen, you know, This right definitely away. helps you level up real fast, right? It helps you think ambitiously. <laughs> well, um, now that you can scale, too, now that you can sell more donuts, if you, if you start to realize, you know what, the price point may be a little too high for the wider market, you're like, well, I can carry 6,000 boxes now, so... You know, maybe, maybe the price, for, no, so maybe for the customer, the price even comes down a little bit. Oh. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, the big part of it, too, is I know with this many orders, I'll have people wanting to do a lot of custom orders. So there's a lot of kind of economics I'll have to figure out. But, I mean, it could be a possibility because Krispy Kreme still isn't offering me a discount, you know. But, right. Oh, okay. So they, have they been kind of like coy with you about the whole thing? No, I mean, they've been very supportive throughout the whole journey. I mean, they gave me 500 dozens, which I'm very appreciative. Yeah. I mean, you guys gave me the van, which is incredible. Yeah. You know, an incredible 
thing, but no, they've really kind of given me the tools, everything I need to get up and going again. The 500 dozens was cool. I mean, like Craig was saying, the a donut van, you know, that would have been pretty cool as well, you know. But they've been pretty supportive throughout the whole journey so far. They're in, a, I guess, a bit of a funny situation. But, uh, you know, I think it's pretty profitable for them to be selling you donuts at cost. And then you're the one that is a- able to make the, uh, the margin on that. Is it a pretty good margin? Is it a pretty good business? Yeah, I mean, as you stated before, it's about double the cost. So it's like $9 for glaze, 12 for a mixed variety. And then, as you know, I pretty much make about $8 a box profit. Yeah. You know, so it's a pretty good margin for what I'm doing. I mean, I only have to work once a week, and I yeah. make enough to cover my expenses and pay for college at the same time. Are you, are you expanding? Now that you have the van, are you expanding into other commodities? Hard <laughs> to find a cod. I know we talked about this on What the Truck last time, but uh, I really want you to start bringing Trader Joe's food to Chattanooga. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll kind of see. I was doing Monster Energy drinks for a time, and I could haul a lot Ooh. of Were those banned or, like, four loco? You could go through, like, places where, like, but I guess that would be illegal. Yeah. I, I, we can't advocate rum running no, no or something. No activity donut going van. on here, you know, but there's definitely some future opportunity with the van. You know, we hear about stories all the time. We hear about news stories. Uh, our news anchor, Emily, she used to work for the regular news and would really cover a story like yours. And and now that she's here helping produce this stuff, we cover a lot more interesting stories. And we we are always trying to advocate that there's more to the supply chain than just a truck or, or a box. It's all about the freight that's inside. That's the revenue and the lifeblood of everything but what's it like being a part of a viral story all of a sudden you wake up like did how did life change after that i mean my life definitely got a little busier that's for sure you know it's i wake up and i have to go through all the facebook messages all the linkedin you Mm. know opportunities that people have been offering me so it's more of kind of celebrity i see why celebrities don't check uh, and respond as many messages as they get you know (laughs) So it's definitely a lot busier, but are you? Uh, are you? It sounds like you're not letting it go to your head. Are you? Are you? Le- are you still able to focus on your studies? Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> studies have been quite hard. I've you know I've emailed my professors about the whole thing and hey, come to Chicago doing these interviews and they've more of been they've been supportive. They're like, hey, you know, take advantage of the opportunity. It's not every yeah. day that one gets this opportunity. So go ahead, we'll extend the dates and times. You know, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Right. Has, has anyone extended educational opportunities for you in, in terms of business or advancing your degree or anything in terms of that? Yeah, I mean, education-wise, not so much. Mm. Uh, as you know, I want to become a thir- certified public accountant. That's, yeah. I mean, I do entrepreneurial stuff on the side, but my degree is going to be in accounting. Yeah. And so I've actually had big four firms. Donut Guy CPA. Donut Guy CPA. Yeah. <laughs> well, that should be your company. <laughs> You may have some uh, supply chain opportunities in your future. Uh, in the meantime, like, how do they celebrate you and get in touch with you? Uh, how can, uh, yeah, what's the best way? For sure, you can contact me on my LinkedIn. That's my personal kind of page, Jason Gonzalez on there. Otherwise, you can contact my Krispy Kreme Run Minnesota Facebook page. Okay, the Krispy Kreme Minnesota? Krispy Kreme Run. Run. Minnesota. Minnesota, Minnesota yep. page. Thank, I saw Jason you came here with a friend. Here's a couple t-shirts for the both of you. Thank you very much. Stay warm it. and have a safe trip back. Uh, when do you get the van? Sounds like I'll be getting it January 1st. So Ooh. i got some planning to do. Happy New Year to you. You as well. <laughs> 2020, yeah, new <laughs> Thank decade. You. Thank you. Thank you for Great coming. to see you, Jason. Good to see you as well. We still have a lot of show left. We still have another, what, what time is it now? Now we're on Central Time. I get so confused by these time zones because they move the clocks ahead. And now, what are they? Uh, I know. I think we're, um, so it's one minutes. o'clock. It's about to be one yeah. o'clock, right? Yeah. Who's up next? Is it, is it off the supply chain? Uh, no, we are going to see Miles. Uh, I was about to say Miles Davis, but it's Miles English. Miles Davis. My, <laughs> we're about to see Miles English. Uh, he is the chief insight officer at uh, at uh, Echo, and he is going to talk to us about technology for 20 minutes, uh, and that is uh, coming up. It's, it's first the Fireside Chat. They're going to have, uh, what, Matt Silver. I think we're going to have Forager up here. Dean Croak's going to come up here. We're going to have people from Hazlitt Express. It's going to be really exciting. We also still we still haven't had Jordan Belfort, right? We still have the Wolf of Wall Street coming up. Still looking forward to him. And, uh, and gentlemen, general session will resume in five minutes. There you go. General, general session is resuming in five minutes. Five good minutes. That yep. means we only have about five minutes left to get lunch, doesn't it, Chad? Oh man, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been great to be doing this with you for the first time out of the Goldfish Bowl, celebrating with 
every one of our, our friends. Well, and you know Chicago, man, we like bringing the deep dish pizza of freight, what the truck, to the people in nuggets like this. This is an interesting format, yeah. too, because we're like, we'll be back up here, as you mentioned, in about an hour. We're going to be doing 20 minutes with Echo, and then you have to do, the reason you're wearing that tie, is you're doing your <laughs> Freight Waves TV show off the supply chain on the Amazon effect, something that has really been in the news, too. They've been on both sides. We have seen lawsuits come after them from both shippers and carriers on uh, du duplicious, unfair practices that people are saying, allegedly. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's funny, like, you know, like technology a lot, in a lot of these companies, it's really exciting for a while, and we feel like they're, they're, they're changing our worlds for the good, and then sometimes the, the darker side materializes. Um, we, we saw Ben Mesrich talked about that with Facebook, and, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of issues with Amazon right now, much as we love, love our one-day shipping. No, Chad, a lot of people are going to be opening up their app stores today to download Disney Plus. Because they're going to want to watch The Mandalorian, just like I am when I get to the hotel room today. Oh, yeah. But when you're in the app store, download the Freight Waves TV app because Great it's plug. on Roco. It's on it's on, uh, yeah. on your Amazon Fire device. It's, a fun it's on way Apple to watch TV. It. It's wherever you want to watch these streaming shows we're gonna have also watch it we have what the truck this very show you can watch our back catalog and shout out to jonathan smith for making it happen making the connections happen i think he deserves a box of crispy creams for that also what the truck was our first podcast but now we have more than 10 of them follow freightcast on apple podcast spotify stitcher and everywhere podcasts are heard oh. around the world nice humble brag what? This is our show. I can brag as much as I want. I made this 10 is the show podcasts. I should make my cab out on chat. This is the one I get to do it on. Okay. Um, yeah, it's great to see everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for the love and for all of your attention. I, I'm seeing you. I see you out there. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for. I got a wave. Okay. Um, how do they get in touch with you? At Timothy Dooner on Twitter. Chad, what is next for you after <laughs> Off the Supply Chain? Who do you think is going to win? Who are the competitors today? Who do I think is going to win? Who, well, who, are your, who is going to be the contestants today? Oh, on, on Off the Supply Chain. Yeah. I thought you meant for the Freight Tech. I was like, man, that's complicated. Uh, it's going to be Dean Waller, Dr. Matthew Waller. Ooh, a he, doctor. Uh, yes. You're he, a doctor, too. Yeah, but not like oh, he is. style. Yeah, uh, he, he's going to be on with Jason Trapp of Shipwell. Uh, and He's a president and co-founder of Shipwell. And Gnome Frankel of Freight Friend. I think it is time to find your seats, it's everybody. Time for the general session. We can't compete with that. But it's been great yeah, to be here we, in uh, cooperative collaboration with you. Hang around to the top of the hour. We're going to be back with another couple fireside chats. What the Truck will be on at 1.40 to 2 o'clock with Echo Global Logistics. Local heroes right here to Chicago. That's right. Then there's that off the supply chain. Plus, you heard about that general se session. Go to FreightWaves.com. You can also watch the main feed, the main stage right there. Got to love technology. <laughs> we do. Want to go get something to eat, buddy? Yes, go. All right, let's do it.